G'day. A few days ago I had to make up some parts which were relatively thin and uh, the trouble with, with thin stuff is that it def deflects or can deflect under tool forces unless you're careful. And so it got me thinking about other ways I do thin parts and so this video is a collection of, of uh, a few methods that I use. There are probably others out there which I don't know of or haven't, haven't mentioned but uh, just a few ways of, of making thin parts which you uh, may not have, have thought of. This part, uh, it's, a, it's a, a round disc, 100 millimeters in diameter, and then it's got a 68 square cut in there. Uh, now, trying to do that, you could probably do it with some double-sided tape or something like that, but what I'm, what I'm doing here is I've got a length of the stock, I've turned the outside to the size I want, I've then centered it up in the, the mill here, and I'm going in and putting that groove in to a little bit deeper than what I, I actually need. What's going to happen is once that's once I've finished doing that cutout, I'll put it back onto the lathe, set that to five millimeters, which is what it needs to be, and then part that off. Uh, and fingers crossed, that'll that'll get me a a reasonable um, part out of it. I did try it the other way around, by the way. I tried putting the parting in there and then uh, machining the the square in, but I got too much movement there. So this is. This is probably the better way of doing things. So anyway, this is so this is this is one way of making a, a, a thin part. Uh, you know, basically leaving it attached to the stock uh, and then parting it off. Notice that I've, this is a round bit of stock, so I've got a V-block on this side, and I've got one of my uh, Dalek clamps on the other side, which seems to be doing okay at the moment. So that's all good. Some fool forgot to turn the audio on, so uh, I'm having to try and remember what I said some time ago. But this is a piece, the, the front back dimension has been taken to size, but the sides have been left overly long. The piece in the middle is 0.7 of a millimetre thick, and so I'm coming down to a final size to try and do that. I'm doing it in two passes because I don't want the cutter to deflect too much and uh, I think I have to take about four millimeters out of that and that it's a it's a six millimeter cutter and I need that because of the internal uh, radii there but I've got the clamped down and I'm clamping to the to the material on the table rather than in the middle just to avoid any um, warping and all that sort of thing I've I've trammed up to the to the back edge, uh, front and back are parallel, and so what I should get is if I've centered on the on the uh, the hole properly, I should get an equal amount uh, front and back, and then I'll come along later on and trim the sides and and, and put a radius on. Uh, what else can we say about this one? Um, not a not a lot really. Uh, it's it's pretty straightforward milling. I've just gone round in a in a spiral there to just chew the material out. But it's you know the, apart from having to try and uh, preserve it so that the, the the material doesn't distort, it's a pretty straightforward milling job. Uh, the hole in the middle is actually meant to be there, and that's a handy thing to have because I can I can use that to help secure as well. But in this case, I haven't because I'm machining uh, something away there. Supposing I want to make a part like that. Now, at first glance that doesn't look too, too difficult, but if you... I'll put that into millimetres. If you zero that, and then measure the OD there, that's one millimetre thick wall either side. Okay. Two ways of doing that. One way of doing that might be chucking up your stock, um, putting your groove in and then finishing off with the, the hole before parting off. Uh, and the reason for doing the hole afterwards is that when you're, when you're plunging in, you're going to be pushing the material away from the tool a little bit. And so if you've got a hole there, it may distort depending on the, on the wall thickness. Uh, so you get a more accurate part if you, if you, if you drill afterwards. But if you haven't got the length of, of material to be able to hold it into a chuck, um, and I did one once which was about that diameter, you have, have to have a, another way of doing it, and that's this. Here's my setup for this one. I've got uh, a wooden mandrel in here, and it's just a wooden mandrel because that's what I've got. 
and that's a that's a close fit for that but I'm, I'm trying hard not to put any any pressure uh, on that just just to, to provide support so when I have a tool force coming in the material is assisting but it's not going to try and push it back out to drive this uh, I won't rely on the friction of this if you had something with say a grub screw or something like that you might be able to do that but I'm not going to what I'm going to do instead is using my you know wooden um, what would you call that centerpiece I don't know uh, and it doesn't have to be wood you could make one up out of out of uh, uh, metal if you wanted one in fact I might even have a look and see whether I've got something that'll, that'll do the job uh, but I'm going to be holding that piece of aluminium in contact with the jaws with this right so it's, it's basically going to be friction through there and then I'm just going to be gently plunging in to make my cotton reel There is a last method I'll mention, and that's using super glue. I don't uh, use this one very often. I don't like it. It doesn't doesn't work very well for me. What I've done here is I've I've bored a, a shallow cavity uh, to hold my part, clean that with acetone, and then basically stick that in there. Once that's in there, I can then come along and, and, and face across there. Uh, variations on this bit of double-sided tape. I've used that before in a pinch. I've also had um, parts where there's got been a few holes and I can screw parts down and that gives me a much more positive uh, hold on, on things that I can use for, for driving and turning. I guess the main limitation of this is you've got to take um, smallish cuts. If you take too much of a cut then the, then the glue gets overwhelmed and off you go. However, we'll, we'll give this a go and see what happens. Anyway, there's, uh, there's four ways of, of making thin parts. Uh, to get that off, all I'll do is apply a little bit of heat and, and that, that'll, that'll pop the super glue off. But um, yes, four ways doing, doing thin parts. So I um, hope that's of use and uh, we'll see you for the next one.